Now listen to part of a lecture on the topic you just read about. Scientists are working to understand the causes of the outbreak that wiped out a tremendous portion of the sea star population. The reading sure lays out some good explanations for this sea star meltdown. But I want to point out why the reasons are all majorly flawed. The reading ties the sea star wasting syndrome with a densovirus, but it is definitely unconvincing. In earlier findings, it is true that scientists have found a densovirus in a greater number of sea stars with SSWS, the sea star wasting syndrome. However, what is surprising is, a few years later, scientists also spotted a densovirus in healthy sea stars. This means that both healthy and sick sea stars had a densovirus. And, it turns out that, this densovirus is not something new. Densovirus had been detected in museum specimens of sea stars, that were collected in the 1940s. So, we can say, densovirus had been around with sea stars, for a long time. Well, it's true that warmer water is usually the culprit of many marine diseases, but the results of new experiments have shown that, elevated seawater temperature, was not the main factor behind this outbreak. Scientists experimented with diseased sea stars, put in two separate tanks, with different water temperatures. Sea stars in warmer tanks experienced rapid progression of disease and mortality, while the sea stars in cooler tanks showed a much slower progression of SSWS. Interestingly, the cool water didn't keep the sea stars alive because eventually, all the sea stars died in both tanks. And lastly, although human activities are increasingly harming the marine environment, I seriously doubt that pollution had anything to do with this sea star massacre. It is extremely odd for pollution to precisely target only the sea star population. If dirty water was the case, why aren't there any other marine creatures, or fish dying, or dead in the sea? It is not like the others have Superman immunity.